Next, we're going to do the staff hours. Staff hours should be very simple as well because it's another report. The idea is to do so that the managers can run a report named staff report to view a summary of all of all the at week hours from their employees. Um, so that's if you guys remember, that's going to be the the step that they go to when they um, let's take a look at the wiki for us, the storyboard. If you are a manager, not an employee, but a manager, from timesheet list, once you sign in, you see your timesheets because you're also an employee. But from timesheet list, you should be able to get to staff report. And staff report is the, the one that we're going to create that allows the manager to view all the hours from, from their employees, from his or her employee employees. And um, notice that from there, you should be able to go to approve hours, which is our next um, user story that we're gonna in going to implement. All right, so next one is going to be staff hours. So for staff hours, you're going to need its own controller. We're going to call it the um, staff hours controller. Okay. And it's going to be a simple form controller. We decided to implement it that way. So we're going to have to override the form backing object. We're going to need the timesheet manager, the employee manager, and the application security manager. Okay. And oh, I see. Okay. And uh, the form backing object is. What are we going to do in the form backing object? Well, make sure that we are the right person, authenticated. And that uh, we're looking at the right um, uh, staff hours report. So what are we going to do? We're going to ask the application security manager to get us the employee out of the session. It's going to cast it into an employee and it's going to put it here. Then we're going to ask the employee manager. Remember, the employee manager is the guy expert on employees, right? And so the employee manager should be able to give me all the employees that report to me. And in fact, that's a function that we created back when we were creating the managers for the employees. There's a function that returns a list of all employee records reporting to an employee with a given employee ID. So we're going to be passing the employee ID of the manager and get reporting employees is going to give me all the employees, a list of employees that report to that employee ID manager. And that's basically, you know, very simple. From employee where manager employee ID equals question mark and question mark will get replaced as a parameter, will get replaced by the employee ID being passed as a parameter. And we're expecting a list. So that's it. We return that employee list. So, employee manager is going to give us the list of employees for my ID, which is taken out of the session. And that's going to be called the reporting employees. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare a list of timesheets, because I'm going to have to create a whole list of timesheets from each one of the employees that report to me. So I'm going to prepare it. It's going to be a new array list. And, and then I'm going to traverse through the reporting employees list. And one by one, I'm going to be calling it E, each one. I'm going to, one by one, get the employee ID okay, from that employee. And then I'm going to ask the timesheet manager to get me all the timesheets from that employee. And that's going to be saved here in employee timesheets. And then I'm going to traverse through that list and each timesheet I'm going to call it T and I'm going to be asking for the status code of that timesheet if the status code is not not equal ignoring the case it's not case sensitive if the timesheet status code is not equal to paid 
timesheet pay, which I believe is just C, then I'm going to add it to the list of timesheets that I want to display. So as long as it's not paid, it could be approved, disapproved, uh, pending, submitted. Okay. If it's not paid, then I'm going to add it to the time the list of timesheets, and that's what I'm going to return. I'm going to return a new timesheet list with those timesheets. Wait, wait, wait a minute, a new what? Timesheet list? What is that? Well, remember we're passing a whole list of timesheets um, uh, to the to the front end, right? And timesheet list, the way we did it with timesheet list is we actually pass the list. But in this case, we cannot pass a list. We have to pass an object. Because it's a form backing object. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create our own class. And this class is going to be called timesheet list class. Must be must implement serializable, but that's going to make it um, uh, persist across the requests. Okay, it has to be it has to be implement serializable because that's going to allow us that's going to allow Java to to persist it if it needs to across the 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 requests. And timesheet list is going to contain a variable just one variable called timesheets which which is in essence the list of timesheets the actual list that we need to pass so basically what we have done is we have created a wrapper timesheet list the class is really a wrapper for a list of timesheets so it contains timesheets variable, which is a list of timesheets, and you provide the getters and setters for it. This is the setter, and this is the getter, and you provide a constructor where you pass the whole list as a parameter, and it's going to be saved locally. Okay, so it's a very simple class. But the fact that we have created this class as a wrapper then allows us to use it as the form backing object of our staff hours controller, which otherwise we could have not been able to. Because remember, with with print timesheet controller, the one that was implemented as a, uh, as a simple form controller it also had to implement the form backing object and the form backing object was a timesheet because we were displaying just one timesheet but in this case we're displaying a whole bunch of timesheets S and, and we need, still need to be able to um, produce just one object okay because form backing object returns just an object so we had to create this timesheet list wrapper that that contains it's a wrapper container for all the list of timesheets. So that's it. That's the only trick that's there in the staffing hours, staff controller, staff hours controller. And then if we look at the configuration for that functionality, um, the URL is going to be called staff hours .htm going to be taken care of by its staff hours controller. Here it is. Staff hours controller. Um, it's going to be a session form because we don't want to lose it between um, request and response. We're going to keep it in the session. Okay. In other words, we don't want to create a new list of timesheets every time that it gets requested. If it's in the session, it will respond with that list. Um, the command class is going to be timesheet list. Notice that. Our new wrapper class, which we'll put it in the same package as all the other domain domain models and managers. The form view, the form view is going to be staff hours, which will be 
translate it into staff hours at JSP, and we're going to inject the timesheet manager, the employee manager, and the application security manager, and that's it. That's the only implement. That's the only thing that we need to do to implement staff staff hours report. Oh, and the JSP obviously. In the JSP staff hours, we're passing command. Remember, because that's the object, if that's the form back in object. And command contains a property called timesheets. Remember? It's a wrapper. So when you say for each command that timesheets, you're actually going into the timesheet list wrapper and getting those timesheets. That list of timesheets. Okay, and so each individual one we're going to call it timesheet, and what basically what we're going to do is we're going to print out the ID, the name of the employee that owns it, the period ending date, you know its type, whether it's it's approved, it's approved, submitted. I'm sorry, no, uh, this is the the employee type, so whether it's going to be an hourly rate employee or a manager or an executive or what type of employee is it and then again since we're not using a property editor that is massaging the data then we're going we're gonna to have to do it in the JSP level so instead of displaying total minutes in minutes we're going to display it in hours so we're going to have to divide it by 60 oh and we also have look at this this is really this is really uh, very useful to know. This is how you create a local variable in JSP. Let's say you wanna you wanna display the total the totals the total hours for every single timesheet and then and then you wanna keep adding them up to bring a grand total of all the hours. Well that's what the this variable incrementer is trying to do. Incrementer, this is how you uh, declare it, you set variable incrementer, and you pat and you 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 specify the value for that variable, and the value is going to be whatever it is in incrementer, plus this total minutes divided by 60 for this timesheet. So it keeps adding and adding over and over again throughout the loop, and then at the end it prints out incrementer. Uh, where is it? It prints out incrementer. That's a C out of that incrementer. And in here, actually, in here, what it's doing is it's printing out the average. And the average is what? It's the incrementer, which is the grand total hours divided by the number of timesheets. Command, remember, is our form backing object. And size, since it's a timesheet list, size will tell me how many are in the list. And so in here we're calculating the average number of hours per employee. So let's take a look at the staffing hours in action. To do that I need to sign in as a manager because obviously Mike Dover is not a manager. He's not going to be able to see any staff report right so I'm going to sign out and I'm gonna have to sign in as a manager manager Ter Teresa Walker is Teresa Walker is a manager and the password is agile stuff so I'm gonna sign in as three Teresa Walker agile there it is. So now, this is this is a list of her timesheets, right? Employee Teresa Walker, her timesheets. And then look at this. She has this extra menu that only managers have, which is a menu that allows you to view a summary of a given week's hours for all your employees. 
so if you click in there it's going to take you to staff hours notice that staff hours and so these are the list of timesheets for the employees that report to Teresa Walker in this case if we take a look at the database we see that Teresa Walker employee ID number three is the manager employee for Ajay Kumar employee two and it's a manager for Mike Dover employee one so Teresa Walker is the manager of Mike Dover and Ajay Kumar and that's why we're seeing all their timesheets in here okay so notice that we're we're seeing the timesheet list from her employees with a total per timesheet and also a grand total for all the timesheets and an average an average number of hours per timesheet and we can print it if we want to heck we can even take a look at them notice that she can go and look at any one of the individual timesheets and the reason why she can do that is because we already implemented print timesheet report okay so it's going to go to the same print hours functionality that we implemented um, a few minutes ago okay and we can take a look at anybody's Mike Dover, the time for that week the department that it got you know the regular print timesheet report alright and then notice that staff hours the JSP also has a menu called approve timesheets and that's the next functionality that we're going to develop but before we do that let's take a look at staff hours for a second staff hours um, what else did I wanted to point out here oh, okay I already pointed out the local variable in JSP how to how to specify it with the C set um, what else do I need to point out here? I needed to point something. Oh, okay, here it is. So, notice that in the staff hours, if you are at the staff hours and you're looking at the uh, report for your staff, you should be able to create a menu called Approved Timesheets. Okay? And Approved Timesheets is going to take me to Approved Timesheets.htm but that's only in staff hours okay so um, no other JSP will have that menu that's just the way that it's being implemented now if you guys take a look but why did you implement it that way well because if you guys go into the storyboard you will see that you know you can get to approve hours only if you are at the staff report or looking at a staff report so that's an indication of what kind of menu you need in staff report that it's different from the menus on all the other pages okay questions no questions everybody's good so far okay so that takes care of our sixth uh, user story like I said, we should be cranking them really fast now with this one as well. So report staff hours done.